Hi there, my name is Ewan Hopkins, I'm from Cardiff University and this is a talk all about student life. Um, it'll cover the academic side of things and also of course the social life that students can expect to gain from going to university. Um, one thing you'll note is that after this slide my clothes do change, uh, it's just because I've done a new intro slide for this talk. Um, the last one I had done was, was targeted for a certain school, um, but the rest of the content is the exact same. Hopefully you find it helpful and interesting and, and best luck and stay safe as well. In terms of what student life actually is, um, on the screen now, hopefully it's, it's working. Um, this is what kind of student life is. It's, it's, you can see it's university life on, on the screen, but one thing I always say to students is, is never be afraid to ask questions about social life. Never be afraid to, to make it known that you are looking into and you are, you know, it's really important to find out about social life because whatever university you choose to go to, typically it's going to be at least three years as, as a course uh, in terms of length. So you want to make sure you, you, you know you want to live there, you know there's stuff for you to do, you're not going to be bored, you're going to enjoy your whole experience. Um, I look back on my time at Cardiff University as a student as three of the best years of my life and that's not necessarily because I went to Cardiff, I've got friends who went all over the country and they said the exact same thing and, and a large part of that experience is the social life. So it's okay to find out and it's okay to ask about it. I know some of you won't have any problem asking about social life but for those of you who think oh, maybe it'll make me look bad, it won't. Um, so social life I will go through today, um, making new friends, I'll talk about that and how that's um, something to really bear in mind and something to help ease you through the process. Experiencing a new place, of course, you know, I mentioned already I'm from Cardiff and I went to Cardiff University, so for me, um, I didn't really experience a new city. I did move into a different part of the city, so I was able to see that side of it, but I'll talk about that in more detail. Um, studying. I will talk about studying and the academic side uh, side of it as well. Living away from home, talk about moving out and the process there. Um, and then the last last two, freedom and independence. Something I one of the biggest things I found at university was the independence of it. Was the fact that I was doing everything myself and there was a lot more onus on me to get stuff done. So the independence I felt from that and from moving out for the first time was really something quite um, quite important to me as well. And learning new things. Um, <clears throat> one of the early things I'll talk about in this talk is the fact that you learn about things you want to learn about, which again is uh, is a big plus as well. So, <clears throat> um, just about the academic side of, of student life first of all, uh, first off, one thing I know some students sometimes say they're con concerned or nervous about is that it's going to be too hard or it'll be too much of a, a big jump from school work to university work, but it's never a massive jump, it's not a huge jump. Um, there's more flexibility. A lot of uh, a lot of courses allow you quite a lot of independent study time, as I'll show you with a, an example timetable soon. Um, but it's a different kind of work. Um, you're not necessarily going to be in nine to half, three, four every day. Um, one of the biggest things of it, and if any of you are in a, you're in the, the kind of the process now where you're choosing courses as we speak or you're researching courses as we speak, um, then the most important thing to do is choose a course you've got a genuine interest in. If you don't choose a course you've got an actual passion for, then your whole experience is really going to suffer because of that. Um, I did English language when I went to Cardiff University. English was my favourite subject in school. I was always quite good at it. I enjoyed it. I did a lot of reading in my spare time. So for me, the chance to learn a subject I had an interest in alongside everything else that university offered uh, made my entire student life experience. So make sure you've chosen a course you actually want to learn about. I know it sounds quite obvious, but some students find it difficult to decide what to do. And all I'd ever say is just think about what you enjoy, think about what you want to learn about. Um, and the adjustment period, this is kind of the whole first year. Most unis, most courses, when you do research, you'll see that they'll say that um, year one doesn't count towards your final grade. So um, your final grade after three or four years of university course, year one won't count towards that. All you've got to do in year one is, is pass, is, is make sure that you've got 40% or above and then you can go into year two. And year two then is when the grade starts to matter. So it means you've got this kind of year long um, adjustment period to make sure that 
you're not thrown at the deep end you're not expected to kind of get right down to it and be getting a stars all the time straight away because moving away or experiencing new things can put a bit of strain on you so they give you that year to really settle in to make sure that there's not too much um, onus on you straight away okay right um like I said, you know, the key thing about student life and the best way to give yourself a head start is to choose something you like. You're no longer required to take subjects you're not interested in. I know there are some subjects in school I didn't particularly like, but I was naturally quite good at them. So I did them for grades, but no longer required to do that. Passionate about what you study, like I mentioned. And if you can't decide if you're struggling to choose between two different subjects, then you might want to consider maybe a joint honours. You might want to do a, a, a course where you can do two together. For example, you might be looking at something like history and then something like French, can't decide between the two of them. So you look into a university where you can do them both. So that is an option for you as well. Um, I mentioned new friends and meeting new people. Um, one of the biggest things about university is the people you meet. Uh, I graduated now, um, it'll be 11 years ago this year, which sounds crazy, um, but that's, um, I remember friends I met on the first day of my course. You know that they're still i'm still very close to now i was best man at a wedding a couple of years ago from someone i met on the first day at university so you make friends for life um one thing i liked about it was that where i grew up in cardiff everyone in my school most people in my school have a similar sort of upbringing same sort of background but when you get to uni you get to meet people from all over the world uh, in my first year i lived in a shared accommodation which i'll discuss later with someone from um germany someone from brazil as well so that was really exciting for me um, to meet people from different cultural backgrounds. Um, the, the friends you make, you know, in different kind of areas in the university, there's always a bit of a head start. Anyone you meet on your course has got the same subject passion as you. So if you do geography, everyone on that course enjoys geography like you do. Uh, if you join a football team or a hockey team or any sort of sports team, everyone there has got the same interest as you. If you join a society, like I'll talk about later, everyone's got the same interest as you there again. So you've got that initial kind of head start and that initial bond for the relationship. So it makes it easier to meet people and to get to know them. Um, there's, there's always chances to do group work. Every course you do will, will involve group work at some point as a as kind of skill setting a challenge. Um, but it's also, a, it's mainly a relatable support system because everyone's going through the, the same process. I remember thinking, oh, it'll be easier moving down the road, so it won't be too hard for me. But moving into accommodation, moving out for the first time was a bit more daunting than I thought the closer it got. But just remembering and really thinking about the fact that everyone else is going through the same motions um, made it easier for me because everyone has moved away. Everyone's starting in a new place. Everyone's studying a course for the first time at university level. So you've got that relatable support system of students going through the exact same thing you are, which makes it a lot easier for you as well. Um, in terms of teaching again, so sticking with the academic side of it for now, um, one big thing I found is that, you know, nobody's going to chase you. Uh, of, of course, I don't mean literally, that'd be a bit weird. Um, but in school, I know that if I was given some coursework to finish in a few months time, I'd be constantly reminded of it, you know, do this, make sure you've done that, which was quite helpful. But it, but when it gets to university, you're told, right, coursework is due in three months and they don't mention it again. So there's a lot more emphasis on you getting your stuff done yourself, working a timetable, making your own schedule in terms of making sure you get the work done. Um, so having nobody chase you, I liked because I felt there was more, almost more respect for me to get on with it and just to get things going. <clears throat> um, you can have a varying timetable, course to course, every course has got a different timetable of course, but also week to week can be slightly different, term to term can be different. Um, depending on course you take, you could be in eight hours a week or you could be in 30 hours a week. Uh, I did English language like I mentioned and I on average per week in terms of contact hours, by which I mean um, lectures and seminars, I had around about 10 hours, so two hours a day. Whereas I had friends doing different subjects, like a bioscience degree maybe, and they could be in 25 hours plus. Um, so really important to bear that in mind as well. Um, lots of flexibility in teaching and assessment, coursework, exams, other ways to be assessed as well. And like I said, there's a big emphasis on independent study. There's a big expectation that you'll get the work done yourself and 
for me in, in my free kind of independent study periods, it was really important for me to make sure that I had I had a plan. I was making the most of them. <coughs> Excuse me. I could, of course, um, go to the library or go to lunch, go into the city centre and do all these things, enjoy social life in my independent study times. But at certain times of the year, it was important to really knuckle down and make the most of them in terms of revision and research um, and stuff like that as well. Okay, so um, I mentioned uh, briefly there about um, contact hours, lectures and seminars. Um, I'm aware at this point my head might be right in the way of the bottom right, but I will go through that. Um, you're going to be taught in a few different ways, whatever course you take. Lectures in the top left, um, quite straightforward. That's where you're in large groups. There could be 100, 200, 250, 300 of you all in one lecture theatre. It says there, ask questions, but to be honest, it's not really the best place to do that. You're normally just taking notes and, uh, and learning that way. Um, bottom left then, seminars. This is more to do with meeting in small groups. Um, you can engage in discussions with your course mates. You can talk about different topics. There's about 10 or 15 of you maximum. So this is where you can discuss things from your lectures and, and, and help each other out. There could be parts of the course you understand and your mate doesn't. So you can talk them through it and then vice versa at different times. And um, so everyone will have a seminar or a tutorial as well on different topics. Um, top right then, field work or practicals. This again depends on the course you've taken, um, but where courses can be practical, they always will be. Of course, healthcare courses, um, architecture, loads of these sort of courses. Field work wise, of course, earth, notion, science, geography, um, kind of natural science courses. There's lots of off campus experience to get as well. Um, so you can get loads of skills from that. You can study abroad as part of a course. I'll talk to you our, our kind of study abroad program in Cardiff a bit later on. Um, but if you are thinking you do like the idea of studying abroad as part of a course, then make sure you've done research to find out that you can do that at the university you're looking at, because not every university and not every course gives you that opportunity. In the bottom right behind my head, I think, is independent research. So this is, like I mentioned earlier on, is making the most of those written independent study times, which you're all going to have. Um, I just again wanted to show you an example of um, a student timetable. Um, so hopefully this works because different things flash up at different times. But like I said, every course is going to be different. Every university is going to be different. But what you're going to be looking at is you can have a certain amount of teaching hours per week. So this student studying maths has got, you know, maximum a day, three or four hours, um, nothing on Wednesday, very short day Thursday. So it's a very kind of lot of free time I think you could look at that and say a lot of independent study time to go with that. What the student might want to do is then make the most of that free time to, to kind of prepare for presentations, revise for exams of course at certain times of year and when you're coming up towards exams and you have reading weeks um, you might have a tutor meeting which I'll discuss shortly, you have to prepare for a seminar, there's lots of things you can do independent research and reading as well. Now this student has got quite a busy week already with lectures and independent work, but as you can see, there's still lots of free time to enjoy social life as well. Um, so what you might want to do is, is fill it with these sort of things, birthday parties, going for lunch with mates, going to the gym, concerts, food shops, whatever you can think of. And even then there's still time to, to kind of relax as well. So, you know, make yourself a schedule. Don't be so strict on yourself. You know, do enjoy yourself at university. That's what, you, you've got to do that's what's going to help you get through it and you're going to get better grades from enjoying yourself um, because you enjoy your time there but this gives you an idea as to what sort of timetable you could be met with this is what we an, an example timetable of a student we've got on one of our well, our maths courses this is what they gave us and as you can see like i said there's still hours every day where they've got a bit more time for relaxation if they want it and um, one thing i would do by the way sorry to, to try and move on is um, I appreciate, of course, it's, you're probably not going to be going to any open days before summer. If open days come back after September, speak to students, find out as much as you can about their timetable. If, if open days are a bit further away, um, then if you go on university websites, a lot of them are doing things like live chats with students. So you can speak to current students, so you can find out <clears throat> about their current timetable and, and what they get from it. And just so you've got a bit more an idea about what course life at that university may be like. Okay. 
Um, just coming towards the end of the student life bit before I move across to, uh, to Cardiff University itself. Um, again, I won't go over this bit in too much detail yet because I will talk about it a bit later on, but make the most of libraries. There's going to be student support centres offering advice and guidance. Student representation centre where you're mentored by current students who have been through the process um, and also be assigned a personal tutor as well, who's someone who works in your department who you can meet up with if you want to to discuss things to do with the course. Um, plenty of student support services you know, in Cardiff University, we've got all the ones on the screen here. Um, we're also in the process, as I'll show you a bit later on, of building a brand new centre for student life, um, which is a £50 million development and it's going to be the home of student support services. So we've got professionals and counsellors and a whole host of different sort of um, um, specialisms. But it's just to show you that there is going to be a lot of support for you. There's, you're always going to have someone to speak to if you want to and to help you if at any time you find it quite difficult. Um, OK, so now more to do with like kind of the moving outside of it and more the social life. So you've done all your research, like I've shown you, you know what you're doing, you get to university, you probably move in. September before you move in, what you'll get earlier in that year is you'll get an email about accommodation. Um, so make sure you've done your research and accommodation in, in that university so you know what sort of thing you're looking for and where you want to stay. Most unis um, can offer you your first or second choice accommodation. At Cardiff alone, we've got 15 different halls, so something for everyone, really. Um, you'll then get notified once you've got your grades and you've been accepted, you'll get notified into what sort of grades uh, accommodation you've actually been given. Um, You'll move in, you'll be allowed to move in around about mid-September normally. So it gives you a chance to move in. And then the course won't start till early October. So you've normally got, if you move in on time, the best part of two or three weeks to settle in and to kind of get to know the area if you want to. Um, so it does give you a bit of time to do that. Um, with moving away from home, like I said, it can be daunting. Um, it can be quite a um, an off-putting thing for some students, but just bear in mind everyone's going through the same thing. You know, if you if you haven't moved too far away, just know that you can go home at any time if you want to. Um, don't feel as if you're kind of all on your own because you're not going to be at all. Accommodation I'll discuss a bit later on when I come to Cardiff University. Residence is life is where we have current wardens um, who work in the accommodation, who are current students. So they're there to help out and they can help you move in and they can run workshops and cooking workshops, those sort of things as well. <coughs> Making friends. Um, when you get in added to the when you get assigned your accommodation room, you'll be invited in most cases, most universities to join a Facebook group. Um, <coughs> I know that Cardiff University does this where you'll be sent a private link and then you'll be in um, a private chat with the people you're going to move in with in your flat. Um, so it means you can get to know them beforehand. You can have a chat. It kind of does away with any concerns about meeting them for the first time. Um, you can also then arrange what to bring. You know, I didn't have this when I went to uni and we ended up with six kettles in the first week. It's obviously a bit insane. Um, but it means you can discuss about what to bring and who's going to bring what. And you can get to know each other before you meet, which helps, I think, ease any concerns. Um, Freshers Week, you've probably all heard of Freshers Week or Freshers Fortnight. Um, it's, it's, it's many things. It's not just... Um, a week of parties as it often kind of gets thought of. It's a chance to, to tour the city, tour the university, um, meet people, join up with sports and societies, settle in, go on big shops to get everything you need. Um, it's a chance to settle in. Um, there will, of course, be um, social events run most, if not every night, um, in the university or in the city centre. But it means then that you can... Um, you can settle in and get to meet people before you actually start your course. So that's something to definitely look forward to as well. Um, with moving out, there's a massive uh, kind of um, increase in dependence like you'd expect when you're moving out for the first time. Communal living can be quite difficult at first, but in most cases you're going to have your own, your own room, own on-street on bathroom, and then you'll just share a kitchen, which ends up, <coughs> excuse me, being sort of like a social room, a social area. Um, so it's not quite as kind of communal living as you might think. It means you can develop your personal skills. 
<clears throat> I know for me, I was having to redevelop things like my motivation skills <clears throat> when I was at home. You know, someone was there to wake me up most mornings, but in university, no one's doing that for you. Um, so it's really making sure you can get up and go to lectures for the early nine o'clock ones. Um, cooking skills. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a tickle in my throat. Um, I learned to cook for the first time properly at university. I thought I'd hate it, and I did. Um, quite enjoy it now when it was a different skill to learn. It's quite exciting as well uh, when you're learning new things. And also managing your own finances, managing your own budget. Um, because you're going to have a student loan, you're going to have any sort of wages or savings you might have or help from parents or family as well. But you're really managing yourself, paying bills and going weekly food shops, those sort of things as well. Sorry, I had to pause again there to have a bit of a coughing fit. Um, I'm now going to move across on to Cardiff University. So a bit more about us. I'll touch upon things I've already mentioned, just from our point of view. Um, all this information is available on the website. We are looking to hold a virtual open day as well, um, possibly on a Friday the 3rd of July as the original open day was meant to be planned. Can't confirm that totally yet, but have a look online or, or look on our website to find out a bit more nearer the date. But there'll be a chance to find out more about Cardiff then. Um, sort of like a content before I get into it, um, just to give you a few headlines about Cardiff University. Uh, we are part of the Russell Group. 24 universities in the UK committed to academic excellence and teaching and research. We're also the only one in Wales, which we're really proud of. In the most recent uh, research excellence framework, we are ranked fifth in the UK for the quality of our research. 100 million pound in research contracts, capital city location, which I'll talk about shortly. That's one of the, I've always felt one of the biggest draws of Cardiff is the location. Um, we're a very international university. We've got over 31,000 from over 100 countries all over the world. Over 300 different subjects you can choose from, ranging from joint honours, courses with placements, years abroad, um, anything you can think of. 84% student satisfaction is a very high student satisfaction rates. And also, um, bottom right, um, graduate employability of 96%. Graduate employability is is what is where after six months of a student, after they graduate, sorry, um, what are they doing? Are they either in further training, so doing a master's or a postgrad? Are they in work? Or are they unemployed? Now, 96% of our students are either in training or they're employed. So very, very high number. Um, in terms of university and being part of the Russell Group, it means we do stand out and recognise an excellence. We've got very flexible degree structure, like I mentioned earlier on, including placement years and master's courses, years abroad, um, joint honours as well. We have a range of prelim year courses. A mixture of vocational and professional content where you can learn and work at the same time, especially with things like healthcare subjects. We've also got a range of accredited courses, um, for example, psychology, business uh, and many more as well. Uh, and also four of our university subjects have been ranked top 50 in the world in the most recent QS World University rankings, including journalism and engineering as well. Um, in terms of research, we, we are a very research intensive university. Um, but I appreciate that some students sometimes say, well, why does that matter for me? Why does being research intensive make a difference to me as a student? But it means you're going to be taught by leading ex-scholars and academic staff at the cutting edge of research. Um, Cardiff University researchers have breakthroughs in areas as, such as Alzheimer's disease, breast cancer and nuclear waste disposal. We've got very high standards of learning and teaching. Um, students are able to benefit from a vibrant teaching environment as well. And also there's opportunities to partake and learn firsthand from research projects. It's not just a case of you reading about it or just hearing about it secondhand. You can take part in it firsthand if you want to. Um, we've got something called the Cardiff University's Research Opportunities Programme, uh, QROP for short, where students can get paid to partake in research over summer. So some students can work four or five weeks over summer and get paid £200 a week to partake in research firsthand. So really good for skills and to learn more as well. Um, I mentioned earlier on about um, our new Centre for Student Life, uh, which is scheduled to finish early next year. May, of course, be pushed back a little bit, of, um, given everything that's going on. Um, but if you were to start entry 2021, it's envisaged that it would be open for September or at least that Christmas. Um, we're currently in the middle of our biggest campus upgrade in a generation, which is a £600 million investment in our future, um, including £40 million to reshape all our lecture theatres, 
a brand new social science research park. We've got a new premises for journalism, which opened in September 2018 as well. Um, so lots of kind of developments. And, and the reason that the university does this is to enhance the student experience is to make sure that students get everything they want and everything they're looking for from, from their time at Cardiff. Um, I mentioned this earlier on, so again, I won't go over it too much, but in Cardiff, we do have uh, 14 libraries, <clears throat> a few of which are 24 hours, over a million printed books across all our libraries, student support centre, like I mentioned, the very active careers team, the student mentor scheme, where um, you are, as a new student, you'll be put in a group of maybe 10 or 15 of you, and you'll be assigned a student mentor, who's someone who, um, who has studied your course, they could be in second or third year, and you can meet up with them once a fortnight or however regularly you want, just to kind of ease into it and, and know you've got that student kind of peer support from someone who's been there and done it through the exact motions you've gone through. <coughs> okay, now more to do with the, the kind of social side of Cardiff and living in Cardiff and what you can expect from there. Um, some of you I'm sure will have been to Cardiff because again, we're not, that, we're not too far away. Um, if you haven't, just to kind of, talk you through this map. Now, in the map, you'll see down the bottom a kind of a brownish area called the city centre. That, of course, is the city centre of Cardiff. It's really small and compact. <clears throat> a lot of students kind of get put off by the idea of Cardiff thinking it's always a capital city, so it'll be too big. It'll be um, it'll be too much like London, but it's, it's nothing like it. It's, it's tiny. It's, it's such a small place you can walk everywhere. So the city centre from all your shopping, restaurants, um, clubs, bars, places to eat, everything you could possibly want is, is in the city centre. Now you'll see just above that, there's a range of red buildings or red um, things on the map. They're, they're the university buildings, so that's Cardiff University. The one right at the top is Heath Hospital, um, one of the largest hospitals in South Wales, and that's where our medicine and dentistry courses are taught. <coughs> um, everything kind of more centrally in the map is the main Cotage campus. So we're kind of, half campus, half city in terms of our style, which is quite unique because most of the university is all within very close walking distance and you're down the road, literally five minutes walk away from a city centre. Um, the purple one's a bit harder to see, but if you look on the key on the left hand side above that, if you go further up, you'll see a range of purple buildings and um, that's all our accommodation. We've got um, 15 different halls all scattered around this map, as you can see. Most again within walking distance. I stayed in Talabon, which is the one just above the park on the left, which is four in one. So you have around about two and a half thousand students staying there. It's, it's like a big student village, which I know a lot of students like. Um, we've got um, over 333 parks and gardens, um, and one of the largest urban parks in, in Wales. Um, so we are a capital city, so you've got that side of it, but you've also got a lot of greenery as well, which again is very unique. Um, you can see there the big field on the left hand side is huge. On a nice summer's day, it'll be littered with students um, kind of throughout the day, just kind of revising or reading or getting some lunch or having a, a lie down or, or whatever they're doing. So there's a, there's a lot to Cardiff that students don't really realise until they get there or see it online um, that makes it a really special, really unique place to stay. Um, <clears throat> so we took this quote on the screen here. So this picture, I should say, first off, is a picture of Cardiff Bay. Um, Cardiff Bay is is an area probably on a bus around about five minutes away from the city centre. Just if you were to go further down the map, that's where you'll see Cardiff Bay. Um, it's the home of the Wales Millennium Centre, which is a big concert venue, which regularly holds shows. It's the one that looks a bit like um, an armadillo with writing on it, if anyone's seen that. Um, there was loads scheduled to be there this year. I had tickets for Lion King. Um, so, so lots of big shows come to uh, come to Cardiff. Um, there's loads of smart bars, restaurants like Nando's, Pizza Express, amongst many more as well. And it's a really nice place just to, for a different scene to the city centre. Um, so that again is quite unique. Purple flag means the city's been recognised as a very entertaining and safe and welcoming place to live um, and very diverse as well. It's sort of like the green uh, flag for parks and the blue flag for beaches. It's the same system. And the complete, complete university guide quote we've used because we think it describes this very well. Um, Cardiff is a thriving and attractive capital city, widely recognised as an outstanding place to live. Um, and we, we think it sums us up pretty well in that respect. And students who move to Cardiff for university 
majority will end up trying to stay and get work afterwards because they fall in love with the place as soon as they're there. It's just got a special feeling to it. So it really is a, uh, a great place to live. Uh, we were at 10th most beautiful university in the UK a couple of years ago in the Times Higher Education um, rankings. These are other words that have been used to describe as vibrant, exciting, bustling. You know, being a capital city, you probably would expect that. <clears throat> Very inexpensive. Um, I'll talk about it in a bit more detail later on, but Cardiff has been named by Matt West. Um, the most affordable city in the UK for students, so it's a very cheap place to live as well, and also safe and welcoming. Um, people often can come to Wales or come to Cardiff and say they feel very welcome, and that's like I said, that's why students really feel passionately about Cardiff when they uh, when they get here. Um, just I'm um, going to try and go back if I can. Probably can't. Um, the reason uh, I skipped that slide is there's a, it basically is a few facts on Cardiff that, that kind of make it stand out and make it quite unique. Just to reel off some off the top of my head, um, especially today, it definitely is true, but Cardiff um, on average has more hours of sunlight um, a day or throughout the year than Milan, which I know sounds crazy because everyone always associates Cardiff with rain, um, but it's got more hours of sunlight than Milan. Um, if you include the surrounding area, Cardiff has um, <clears throat> 26 castles, which is more than any city in the world. Um, I know that some of you may think, oh, so what? But uh, I think it does make Cardiff quite unique in that sense as well. Um, if you are picking universities based on the number of castles there are, then, you know, you don't need to look much further, really. We've got the oldest record store in the world. Um, Spiller's Records, founded in 1892. Um, so there's lots of things that make Cardiff what it is. It makes it unique, and that's why students fall in love when they get here. <clears throat> On the screen here, you'll see um, St. David's Shopping Centre, which is, one, again, one of the largest shopping centres in the UK. I know that shopping isn't everyone's kind of favourite or cup of tea, um, but this picture you'll see here is uh, the revamped St. David's Centre, which around about 10, 12 years ago, underwent a 75 million pound development to build this, this kind of area. Um, again, being a capital city, you're gonna have most of your major retailers, restaurants, stores, um, because the footfall is gonna be huge in Cardiff. So loads of things to do here. It's also down the road, as you saw on the map um, earlier on, um, <clears throat> to get to St. David's Shopping Centre from the Students' Union or from the, the, the middle of the campus, you're looking at a five minute walk just down one road called Park Place. So very easy to get to, easily accessible for lunch and, and that sort of stuff as well. We've also, you might be interested to know that we've got the second biggest John Lewis in the UK. So again, if you know if you are researching places based on the size of John Lewis, then we should definitely be on your list. Um, it's got four floors, it is enormous to be fair. I kind of get lost in there sometimes, um, but there's a lot to do when it comes to shopping. <coughs> it's not just these big retail stores though. We've got loads of little windy arcades in the city centre, kind of Victorian Edwardian arcades as well, with loads of independent little stores and places. So again, you know, you could easily find yourself shopping for hours in Cardiff and not getting bored. Um, you probably recognise this lady, or at least the uh, the box behind there is as Doctor Who. Um, the reason we've got Doctor Who on the screen is because Doctor Who is filmed in Cardiff, uh, amongst other programmes like Sherlock. Um, Gavin and Stacey, you know, a lot of Gavin and Stacey is filmed in Cardiff. Most of it is filmed in a local area called Barry, which is around about 20 minutes away from Cardiff. Barry Island is a lovely place on a nice day. Um, if you're desperate, you can actually go and see Stacey's house from the show. But it is technically just someone's house, so please don't go all the way just to do that. Um, but with things like Doctor Who and Sherlock, they're filmed in the university campus sometimes and in the building. So it's it makes it, it kind of exciting place to live when stuff like that's going on <coughs> um we're also the home to loads of cultural areas <coughs> st david's hall another concert venue excuse me which regularly holds concerts comedians music shows uh, same with the motor point arena as well um sport wise we were the european cafe sport a number of years ago we've got the principality stadium which I'll show you shortly. Um, <clears throat> I've always better known it as a Millennium Stadium, and you might as well, but the Principality Stadium is, a, is one of the biggest stadiums in the UK. Um, Cardiff City Stadium, home to Cardiff City Football Club. 
and Sophia Gardens home to Glamorgan Cricket Club um, and also home to Ashes te- test matches when England play Australia. Um, often they play in Sophia Gardens as one of those tests. <coughs> um, I won't take too long on sport because I do appreciate it's not it's not for everyone. Um, this picture is the Principality Stadium I mentioned. One unique thing about this is it's bang in the middle of the city centre. So on something like a Six Nations Day in Cardiff, um, the atmosphere just kind of goes through the whole city and you can't really help but get involved in, and fall in love with it, even if you're not that into rugby or sport. Um, <clears throat> especially Wales, England in Cardiff, the atmosphere is, is electric all through the city all week. So it's an amazing place to be. Um, we've got Cardiff International Whitewater Rafting Centre which is the UK's first on-demand whitewater rafting centre. <clears throat> we've got the, the Bays International Sporting Village. Uh, we've the host city of the 2017 UEFA Champions League football final as well. So there's loads to do in the city centre. It's not just there, though. There's also in the university, you've got loads of stuff to do. We've got over 65 sports teams. Um, sorry, my door's about to knock and my dog's about to bark, so please ignore if he does. Um, we've, we have a varsity every year against Swansea. So Cardiff and Swansea <clears throat> traditionally are seen as rivals, probably here in Bark in there. Um, so we compete in about 60, in about 40 different sports against Swansea University. Um, the pinnacle being the men's rugby match. Um, I'll give it a sec, you will stop barking in a, in a moment. The last time I did this, he ended up coming in the room, so at least he hasn't done that yet. Um, so we'll compete against oh, he's, he's off again. Uh, we'll compete against Swansea in, in four. He's, he's not going to stop. In 45 different sports, um, the pinnacle being the men's rugby match played in the Principality Stadium in Cardiff or in the Liberty Stadium in Swansea if it's held there. Um, that sort of day is probably one of the days of the year that students look forward to more than any other. Um, so it's a really really exciting day to be part of, even if you're not playing. Um, even just kind of spectating or going to watch can be really exciting as well. Um, so it's definitely something worth um, thinking about. Those sort of things do make your experience. So if you were to ask any student at Cardiff or Swansea, what day of the year do they, do they look forward to most? I can imagine they'd normally say varsity. Um, with sports at university, you don't need to have any experience. You're not expected to play to a certain level. You can play it for fun. You can try it out and see how it goes. Um, here he comes. This is the guy who's been barking at you as I've been doing the talk. I apologise. Off you go, buddy. Um, okay. Um, so try it out and, and see how it goes from there. And as you can see, we finished top 14 in the UK in the most recent Bucks League, the British University and College League, which is one of the highest finishes we've ever, we've ever had. So we, we do do pretty well in sport. Sorry, I had to remove him from the room. Um, just for the last two minutes, um, like I mentioned earlier on, we've got 16 different residences available, all very affordable, being the cheapest city in the UK to live in, um, according to that West, and all with a great location, all within walking distance as well. Um, so it's a really um, good place to get around, an easy place to, to settle into. You can find that about accommodation online. You can see all about the different options, how much it costs per week, where they're located. So it's definitely worth something looking at, something worth looking into. Um, I mentioned a few times about travelling abroad and the chance to kind of study abroad as part of a course. We've got partners across 25 EU countries um, and international exchanges. These sort of things, of course, might be reviewed and put on hold for a year or, or so, but by the time you were to come to university, it should have been rectified, really. So you'll find that you'll know more about that. Um, we have students on some courses, like our bioscience courses, going to the Bahamas for a year. One of our medicine students went to the Philippines for a few months. We have students going to Australia, America, Canada, all over the world to study. So it's really exciting as well. Um, <clears throat> on the bottom there, you've got Welsh for All or Languages for All. These are two free language schemes that whatever course you take, you're able to actually um, learn the language alongside that. Welsh for all is interesting because, as the name suggests, you learn Welsh. But a lot of students who come to Cardiff and they, they love Cardiff, as I said they do earlier on, um, they will start taking up Welsh for all because, you know, if you're trying to apply for a job in Cardiff afterwards, having at least some level of Welsh can help. So learning it for free one evening a week 
um, is something a lot of students do take up. And languages for all, we've got around about 12, 15 different languages available from French, German, Italian, Spanish, uh, to Chinese, Mandarin, Latin, Japanese, um, amongst many others. So again, it's a, it's a nice new skill to learn for free, a chance to meet new people as well. <coughs> Just to finish off, um, with student life. Um, the Students' Union is sort of like the central student hub at universities. It's where kind of the sports societies and other stuff are run from as well. Um, we, our union is consistently ranked one of the biggest and best in the UK. As you can see on the guide there, Cardiff is one of the biggest, best and most active unions in the UK. Just above that in the What Uni Student Choice Awards, we're top three students union in the UK. It's got four floors, it's got its own hairdressers, shop, nightclub, bar, mini Starbucks, it's got a co-op, it's got a bookshop, it's got everything you can think of. So that's why it regularly ranks quite high. Loads of um, kind of touring artists come to Cardiff as well to perform there uh, for, in the union. We've got over 200 societies, uh, which is where students with similar interests will meet up and, and run events based on different topics. For example, you've got Harry Potter societies, wine appreciation, photography, loads of chances to meet new people and 60 sports clubs. Um, I should say Wednesday afternoon for any university is dedicated just to sports and society. So whatever course you take, including medicine, there's no lectures on a Wednesday afternoon. So any sport you play or in society you're in, that's when they normally run these social events. We've also got our own student newspaper, radio and TV stations, which are run by current students as well. And also chances to volunteer and develop as well. Um, the union, I should say, is run by current students. So you'll have a student union president who will have a year out of their studies and get paid around about £20,000 a year to run the union and have different officers working for them as well. So it's a really good thing to get involved in if that's an interest to you as well. Um, I will leave it out. I've gone over 40 minutes. I do apologise. I was longer than I thought I'd be. Hopefully it hasn't been too long and too mundane. Uh, apologies for the the visitor part of the way through as well um, that was Dexter if um, any questions you've got like I said please feel free to direct them toward Mrs Horrocks and um, she can pass it on to me if you've got any questions about Cardiff or anything at all look on university websites find as much stuff out as you can stuff I mentioned in, with student life if you're looking at other universities then go on their website and look for those sort of things as well just so you can find that as much as you can and um, hopefully you all um, stay safe hopefully We'll have more of an understanding into what's going to happen after summer in terms of open days and those sort of things. There'll be plenty of virtual open days you can look at over the next couple of months to find out more as well. Um, I really appreciate you listening and giving me 43 minutes of your time. Hopefully it wasn't too awkward just having it this way and hopefully it was helpful as well. Um, take care and best wishes.